Hey guys, Jamin here, PC Monkey. I'm bringing you another do-it-yourself computer video today. In this video, I'm going to take you through the entire troubleshooting process of a computer that either won't start at all, or starts and then turns off right away uh, before ever reaching that initial startup logo screen. If your problem is something else, you're going to need a different video. Uh, a couple commonly misunderstood issues is if your computer starts, you can hear the motherboard clicks, you can hear the hard drive clicks, uh, the fan turns on, but the screen just stays black. That is a video link below in the description. That'll be a computer turns on, screen stays black fix. Also, the other issue that may be misunderstood as this one is if your computer starts, you see that initial startup logo screen, but then it shuts off or then it gets stuck. That's a boot loop fix video. That'll again be in the video links below. This video is specifically if a computer starts and shuts off right away before the logo screen or if it doesn't start at all. So to start with, the first thing we're gonna try is a static discharge procedure. Um, some people refer to it as discharging the capacitors, whatever you wanna call it. Maybe you've seen this done before. If you call a, a warranty repair line, this is the first step oftentimes they have you do to fix your computer. So to start off doing this, you're gonna unplug your charger, flip your computer over and take out your battery. Most likely you'll have a computer sort of like mine where there's a switch, maybe two switches, that you press or slide to remove your battery easily. If you don't have a computer like that, maybe your battery's inside your computer, at that point check out a disassembly video, a teardown video, or a battery replacement video on your exact model computer. That'll show you how to open up your computer, get inside, and either remove your battery or just unplug it from the motherboard. Once that's done, we're gonna hold down the power button for one minute. After you've held it down for a minute, we're gonna put your battery back into the computer, or if you have an internal battery, plug it back into the motherboard, and then we're gonna plug your charger back in. Try turning on your computer. If your computer turns on at this point, you've identified the static buildup as the reason why it wasn't working. Try to limit the use of your computer around sources of static. So don't use your computer in bed, um, around blankets or pillows, don't let your cat sleep on it. Um, try to limit the sources of static. Also a big one, make sure you're not plugging your computer directly into the wall. Make sure you're using a surge protector, a healthy one. If this problem persists and you have to do this procedure every time you have to turn your computer on, consider replacing your surge protector, your battery, and your charger. One of them could be bad. If your surge protector is reasonably old, I'd replace that first. If you want to think about replacing your charger, later on in this video I'll show you how to test it to make sure that it's working properly. If you've confirmed it's working properly, then consider changing your battery. If your computer is not turning on at this point, unplug your charger again, take the battery out again, hold the power button down for another minute. After you've held it down for a minute, we're gonna put one of them back in, but leave the other one out. So we're gonna put, let's say, your battery back in, leave the charger unplugged, try to turn your computer on. If your computer turns on, we've identified that your computer's good, the battery's good, the charger is what needs to be replaced. Sometimes the computer can sense when one part is bad and it'll stop itself from turning on to protect itself from being damaged. So again, if your computer turns on at this point, replace your charger. If it's not turning on, we're going to repeat the process, only this time we're going to leave your charger in. So we're going to take your battery out, hold the power button down for another minute. Once you've held it down for a minute, we're going to leave the battery out and plug your charger back in. Then try to turn on your computer. And you probably guessed it, if your computer turns on at this point, we've identified your battery as being bad. Replace your battery. If your computer's still not turning on, then we've eliminated this test, we'll move on to the next test. The next test is gonna be checking your RAM for any RAM issues. So to do that, first thing you wanna do, unplug your RAM, plug it back in, it's called reseeding an item. So make sure that it's not just loose. If that doesn't work, we're gonna actually test to see if one of your RAM sticks is bad. To get at your RAM, most likely you'll have an easy access panel or door on the bottom. If you don't have an easy access panel like I do, you'll have to take off your entire bottom case. If you have to do that, your best bet is to search for a teardown or disassembly video on your exact model computer. Uh, that'll tell you exactly how to get into the bottom case and it'll limit your chances of breaking anything. If you can't find a video, here are some pointers. Uh, first, remove all the visible screws. Uh, then remove your battery. 
if you have a removable battery, watch out, they sometimes hide screws under there. They also sometimes hide screws under the DVD uh, drive and sometimes they hide screws under the bottom feet. So watch out for all those places. If you have an easy access panel, then you're in luck. It's a lot easier. I'm just gonna remove a couple screws and gain access to some commonly used components. So there's my RAM. This is a very normal way that, that you'll see RAM in a laptop. There'll either be two ports for RAM or one port. If you only have one port and one stick of RAM, you'll have to buy another working stick in order to do this test. If you have two sticks, they'll generally be on top of each other or side to side. Now the way to test your RAM is to take one out at a time. They're usually held in by two spring-loaded arms on either side. You pull those apart and the RAM sticks release like that, and then you can slide it out. So you take out one stick and you try to boot your computer again. If your computer turns on, it means that stick is bad, that stick is good, and you have to replace that one. Uh, if you want help in finding compatible RAM, look below in the description. There'll be a link on how to buy the right RAM because not all RAM is compatible with all uh, computers. If it still doesn't work at this point, then you take out the other stick and you put back in this one. And then you try booting your computer again. And then same thing. If it turns on, then this stick is bad and this stick was good. After the RAM test, you didn't find anything wrong with the RAM and your computer's still not turning on. We're going to move on now to what's called a BIOS reset. We're going to unplug the CMOS battery on your motherboard, leave it out for about 20-30 minutes, and then plug it back in. That'll reset your BIOS and eliminate any errors that could be causing your computer to not turn on. Okay, so your computer may not look exactly like mine, or maybe it does. I have one main bottom case that needs to come off to get inside. You may have several easy access doors that have to come off first. Um, it, if, if you want to be super safe about how to get into your computer, look up a disassembly video on your specific model so you know what you're dealing with. But most computers you'll have to remove your bottom screws, watch out for any screws under your battery, watch out for any screws under your DVD player. Some computers may have screws under your rubber feet and some computers you may have to take off your keyboard and undo some screws under there first uh, in order to get this panel off. So again. Either check all these places if you're comfortable, or if you want, uh, look up a disassembly video on your specific model. So this is your CMOS battery. It's a little round component here. It looks like a watch battery inside. It's wrapped in black electrical tape, and it plugs into a port. Another common CMOS battery presentation is on this motherboard here. That's another common way you can see a CMOS battery on a motherboard. So if your CMOS battery looks like mine in my Lenovo, all you would do is, is unplug it from the port. Don't pull on the wire. Just put your fingernails on either side of that thing and slide it out. A little at a time, wiggle it out, and then you've unplugged it. So that's a BIOS reset. Leave that unplugged for a while, and then just plug it back in. If you have this other kind of CMOS battery here, uh, the way to get this out, there's a spring here that holds it in and a spring underneath here that pushes it up. So we're going to want to push this battery back and up. Be very careful though because this right here is very breakable. If that plastic part snaps off then your battery won't be secure. So just be very careful, push in and up like that and it comes out like that. And then again, you would leave it out for a time, and then you would slide it back in and snap it back down in, in, into place. After doing the BIOS reset, if your computer's still not turning on, we're gonna test your charger now. I know we tested it lightly at the beginning, but we're gonna actually physically test it with a multimeter now to make sure that it's actually working properly and consistently. So I'll show you how to test your charger now. If you have one, you probably know how to use it. If you don't have one, they aren't that expensive. I think I got this one for not that much more than $20 US uh, online. But to show you how this works, I have my universal adapter here, and I have it set to 19.5 volts, which is a very common volt rating for laptops. I'm gonna show you how to test it to make sure that it's working properly. When I say setting it to volts, I mean this one right here, the V with the solid upper line and the dotted lower line not this volt with the squiggly line. It'll be this one. I'm then gonna take the other end of my charger, carefully take off my probe covers, make sure that they don't touch, 
Now I'm going to put the black or ground on the outside of my charger casing. And just hold it right on the outside like that. Because that's not where the power is flowing through on the outside. Then I'm going to take my red probe and put it on the inside. And I'll zoom in and show you what I'm doing. So there's my multimeter. Here's my adapter. Here's my adapter end that I'm going to test to make sure the right bolt is coming out. And here are my two probes. So I'm going to take the black probe or ground, hold it on the outside so it's touching the outside casing, and I'm going to take my power one and put it on the inside. As you can see, it's reading 20 volts on the multimeter, which is close enough to 19.5, but what you'll notice is that it's nice and steady. It's not dropping drastically or going up drastically. It's a steady 20 volts, which is a healthy charger. Now to show you what it'll look like if it's not the right voltage, I'm going to take my universal adapter and it's at 19.5 now. I'm going to switch it all the way down to 15 volts for a 15 volt uh, computer. Now I'm going to do the same test. Take my black probe on the outside, touch the inside with the red one. As you can see right there, now we drop down to 15 volts. So if your charger is supposed to be 19 volt and you're getting a 15 volt, then it's not healthy. Or if you're not seeing a steady amount like this, if it's going down drastically or up drastically, again, that's not a healthy charger. After testing your charger, you've confirmed it's working properly. We're kind of left at this point with a motherboard issue. We've tried the static discharge, uh, that didn't help. We've tried checking your RAM, that didn't help. We did the BIOS reset, that didn't help. And we've confirmed your charger now is working correctly. We're left with your motherboard. For those of you who are a little more tech savvy, maybe you know how to solder or desolder things from a board, uh, check out the video link below in the description. That'll show you how to test your power jack with a multimeter just like we tested your charger to make sure that the charger is delivering the right power to the power jack and the power jack is delivering the right power to the motherboard. Again, that's only for those of you that can solder because if you find your power jack is bad, you'd have to remove it and solder a new one onto your motherboard. For most of us, we're not gonna do that. For most of us, the power jack's bad, the motherboard's bad. So for a motherboard replacement, that's kind of the most involved repair you can do on a computer. Check out a motherboard replacement video or a teardown or disassembly video on your exact model computer so you know exactly what you're looking at when you get in there, how to unplug everything correctly, and how to plug everything back in correctly. So hopefully this helped you identify the issue with your computer not turning on. We've identified all the possible causes, taking you through all the steps. At this point, if nothing's worked, you've identified the problem, it's your motherboard. So you will be able to fix your computer if you had this problem. Uh, any questions or comments, if you got lost anywhere, or if you think you have a unique situation, check out the frequently asked questions below in the description. Uh, if you don't see yours there, leave me a comment. I do get back to you guys multiple times a day. Uh, like and share if this helped you out. And if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer work, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, guys.